Iran says it will not abandon its nuclear activities even for a second. It's refusing even to discuss its rights to a nuclear program at Thursday's summit in Geneva. So where does this leave the United States? Scott Ritter served as UN Chief Weapons Inspector in the 1990s, joins me now. Uh, do you think that some of this argument over Iran's nuclear facility in Gome is overplayed? Oh, absolutely. First of all, the, the, the nuclear facility has been declared by Iran. There's no diversion of nuclear material. There's no operational activity taking place and will be fully inspected by the International Atomic Energy Agency uh, inspectors. So it, there is no nuclear weapons program revelation here. What we have is that the United States, backed by Europe and other nations, has said that Iran cannot have a nuclear enrichment program under any circumstances, and Iran's declaration of this new facility is being used by certain elements to say, see, they were doing something in secret, we can't trust them, etc. It's not about Iran's nuclear program, frankly speaking. It's about the theocracy in Tehran and the fact that the United States has deemed the Iranian form of Islamic Republic to be incompatible with our goals and vision of what the Middle East looks like. And in fact, in, in the comment that you wrote for The Guardian, you say that President Obama's announcement that Iran is breaking rules that all nations must follow is technically and legally wrong. But Scott, what about the fact that this nuclear facility is on property of the Iran um, Revolutionary Guard and the fact that it, it's not capable of enriching the uranium needed for a peaceful nuclear power program? Well, you know, these are questions that Iran has to answer, not myself. But uh, the fact that, it, that they're using, um, you know, military terrain to house this facility, I, I think it, it reflects the sensitivity that Iran has towards its overall nuclear program, the necessity to guarantee its survival. Let's never forget that, uh, you know, Israel and the United States have both said that the military option is on the table. Indeed, Israel has made repeated threats to bomb Iran. Mm -hmm. And if Iran indeed believes that, a peaceful nuclear program is part of its strategic interests uh, building uh, you know strategic you depth by having an alternative facility pardon do you think it's counterproductive well absolutely look this is a problem that's going to be resolved by diplomacy not by force of arms uh, and it's ridiculous to keep talking about a military option on the table let's start talking about putting a diplomatic option on the table and sit down with iran uh, on thursday and come up with a meaningful compromise that allows iran to have its nuclear energy program but to ensure that iran is operating in total conformity with the standards that uh, president obama has said must be implemented to make the nuclear non-proliferation treaty work Scott, there's room Ar on both sides for, ariana huffington for is here. a guest with us today she's the editor-in-chief of the huffington Post, uh, Ariana. Scott, you were very prescient in the lead up to the war in Iraq about the hysteria surrounding weapons of mass destruction that turned out not to be there. So what do you see the comparisons between uh, what was happening in this country in the lead up to the war in Iraq and what's happening now in relation to Iran? Well, if you listen to the rhetoric coming out of the, pre the, the Office of the Presidency, the State Department, the Department of Defense, they've already made a foregone conclusion that Iran is pursuing a nuclear weapons program. They're calling it a threat to international peace and security. But no one in the U.S. intelligence community concurs. They say there is no nuclear uh, uh, weapons program. The International Atomic Energy Agency keeps saying, what nuclear weapons program? The bottom line is we have the totality of Iran's nuclear material under safeguards. There's been no diversion. In there's no evidence of a nuclear weapons program. Iran declared this facility. Mm. We didn't discover it. They declared it, and it will be subjected. So there's a huge amount of correlation between the hype that led up to the Iraq war and the hype that's taking place today. And if we don't bring it under control, Americans may very well find themselves waking up one morning in the not-so-distant yeah. future, finding that we're at yet another war in the Middle so, East. So, Scott, it's, it's Dylan. Uh, you've been very effective at laying out what the reality is as opposed to what the fantasy or the fear may be or whatever the politics may be. What is it that we as journalists should be demanding as answers from our politicians as they present rhetoric, one? And two, what is it that voters should be expecting from the U.S. as a matter of policy in dealing with Iran? So journalists to politicians and voters to politicians specific to this issue with Iran. Well, the key thing is to demand uh, facts. This has to be a fact-based 
um, you know, analysis here, not faith-based. What we're getting from the Obama administration is the same thing we got from the Bush administration, faith-based analysis. They believe Iran is pursuing a nuclear weapons program, therefore it is. But there's no evidence to back this up. Journalists should be demanding the hard facts. And when you get into the facts, you have to dig deeper. When they say that Iran is in violation of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, why don't we read the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty? Why don't we understand yeah. what the obligations are before we, we buy into that? And what voters need to do is to talk about what's in the national security interest of the United States. Is what's going on in Iran worthy of the sacrifice of American life? Because that's what we're talking about when we say military intervention. The problem with Iran is not that it threatens the United States. The problem with, these, with Iran is that we've created a threat that doesn't exist. This is a problem that must be resolved diplomatically. We must exhaust every diplomatic option before we talk about the military option. And that's what voters should be demanding. Not to give Iran a free ride, but to insist that we give diplomacy a chance. If you listen to the, the rhetoric of the Secretary of State, she's already given up on Iran before we even engage in the diplomatic activity on Thursday. That's not the way to conduct diplomacy. Let's go in, let's have genuine diplomacy. It has to be give and take, not a one-way street. And then at the end of that day, Iran is not forthcoming. We determined that Iran is a threat. Then and only then do we talk about a military option. But we are so far removed from Iran being a threat worthy of military intervention that it's ridiculous to speak of military action at this time. Scott, we appreciate so much you sharing a very different perspective than the one that is currently being shared um, in much of the case. And Thank you very much. That, we should have Scott around this yeah. show as this week develops and as this story develops, uh, as often as Scott would like to make himself available. Uh, he has certainly more experience, more credibility and more information uh, than uh, most anybody else that we talk to with perhaps the exception of Jim Mikulaszewski and some of our military correspondents who have a different flow of information from the Pentagon but Scott uh, thank you so much Contessa uh, sorry for my little moment there I like but I just, uh, that guy was uh, fantastic so go on very good 